Kurosheva, uh, head of the Department of Eye Diseases of the Federal Medical and Biological University of Innovations and continuing education of uh, FMBR uh, of Russia. Yes, uh, a representative of Russian ophthalmology in the European Association of Predictive, Preventive and Personalized Medicine and a member of International Optical Circulation Society. So, Hello, everyone, uh, once again. The title of my presentation is here, newly diagnosed glaucoma, what should be done at first? This is also a dilemma. Uh, this is my financial disclosure. And dear colleagues, uh, speaking about the initial glaucoma treatment, I would like to remind you that at the very turn of the millennium, there was a very unusual question. Should we decrease IOP in order to improve glaucoma cause and reduce glaucoma progression? In order to answer this question, several very important landmark glaucoma studies were carried out. And their results until now form the basis of glaucoma therapy. Please um, note that in some of these uh, studies, there was a control placebo uh, group. The patients um, didn't receive any treatment. And uh, this allowed uh, to study the natural history of the disease. And in some studies, uh, the newly diagnosed glaucoma patients were recruited. And uh, this allowed to investigate some options of the initial glaucoma treatment, like betaxolol eye drops, ergon laser tuberculoplasty, uh, and tuberculectomy. Surprisingly, that the results of these studies were unexpected. On the one hand, it was clear that it was very important to decrease IOP. On the other hand, a great proportion of treated eyes still demonstrated progression. Like in early manifest glaucoma treatment study, 45% of glaucoma patients still progressed despite the 30% of IOP reduction. And vice versa, in collaborative normal tension glaucoma study, 64% of untreated eyes didn't demonstrate any progression. And this raised another question. Are there any IOP-independent factors of glaucoma development? Interestingly, that a few years earlier, in 1996, four glaucoma phenotypes were described. The phenotype with generalized cup enlargement, focal ischemic, myopic, and senile sclerotic phenotype. And the authors emphasized that glaucoma development differently in these four phenotypes. Interestingly, that this year, uh, the main patterns of a central visual field defects and deterioration uh, have been described in these four glaucoma phenotypes. And once again, you may notice that they are different. Furthermore, the rate of thinning of retinal nerve fibers is also different in these four phenotypes. It is very severe and fast in the senile sclerotic phenotype, while it is rather mild in myopic phenotype. If you look at the results of OCT angiography, we may also notice that in some eyes there is a focal uh, dropout of vessel density, while in other eyes we may obtain the diffuse disappearance of vessel density. And as it has been summarized recently in this paper, only in the sclerotic senile phenotype we may obtain the very fast and severe dropout of vessel density, while in the phenotype with generalized enlargement of uh, excavation it is very mild. And in a phenotype with focal ischemic and myopic uh, phenotypes, uh, this dropout of vessel density uh, is obtained in the inferior hemisphere. In this paper, the authors um, concluded that among these uh, four glaucoma phenotypes, we may expect a good response to the hypertensive treatment just only in the phenotype with generalized excavation. And in all other three phenotypes, there are indeed IOP-independent factors of glaucoma development. 
Interestingly, that these factors have been studied just from the very beginning in uh, the collaborative normal glaucoma treatment study. Um, vascul vascular factors um, were described like migraines, hemorrhages, and in the low pressure glaucoma treatment study, uh, the reduction of mean ocular perfusion pressure and even the use of systemic antihypertensive medications were described as the risk factors of a fast glaucoma progression. And of course, it is worth noting Flammer syndrome. This is a special phenotype with a vascular dysregulation that is closely associated with normal tension glaucoma. According to our recent data, in contrast to high tension glaucoma, in patients with a normal tension glaucoma, there is a pronounced activation of sympathetic nervous system in response uh, to the code provocation test. Nevertheless, we realize that we have to decrease IOP. But the question is, by which level? According to this recent review on the same topic about the initial glaucoma treatment, this range varies from 20 to 50 percent um, from the baseline IOP, but the authors immediately warn us that it is very important to revise the target IOP as soon as possible. According uh, to the Canadian glaucoma treatment study, uh, it was clearly shown for the first time, by the way, uh, that if we uh, consider the rate of functional deterioration uh, determine the target IOP, we may reduce glaucoma progression up to the normal limit. And this is very important. Please look at this uh, clinical case. Uh, the patient with a severe allergy due to a great number of prescribed hypotensive eye drops but if you look at her structural and functional examinations over the time, uh, you can't notice any functional structural progression. Mm, this mean that, means that uh, this patient uh, doesn't need uh, this regimen, maximum regimen, uh, hypertensive regimen, and vice versa. In this clinical case, uh, we may notice uh, the very fast thinning of retinal nerve fibers in 2016, uh, just very soon after the non-penetrated uh, deep sclerectomy uh, that required another surgery, tabaculectomy. According uh, to the European uh, guidelines, the recent guidelines, the prostaglandin analogs are the best candidates for the initial glaucoma treatment, as well as, uh, of course, some other medications, including fixed combinations, may be prescribed for this purpose. But we remember the results of the United Kingdom Glaucoma Treatment Study, that latinoprost may reduce uh, glaucoma progression compared to the control placebo-treated eyes uh, in one year after the beginning of treatment. But if you look at the results uh, of uh, these multicentral studies, um, 32 multicentral studies, you may notice that bimetaprost has uh, some advantages over the prostaglandin analogs uh, due to its uh, high hypotensive efficacy. Some authors believe that um, it is uh, a very good choice to start uh, the treatment with fixed combinations, but uh, we should keep in mind the result uh, of this um, recent review written by uh, the very famous experts, and uh, they uh, warn us about um, the fixed combinations, that a successful stepwise therapy often remains elusive when we include uh, these uh, fixed combinations because of a great number of currently available fixed combinations and uh, the complexity of their inclusion in various combinations therapy. Nevertheless, uh, sometimes we indeed have to switch our patients from the prostaglandin analogs monotherapy to fixed combinations. Like in this clinical case, you may notice uh, the fast uh, structural progression and um, the vessel density disappearance according to OCT and geography and the paracentral scotomes. This is uh, clear that IOP of 19 mm mercury with latinoprost is not a target one for this patient. 
and that is why we switch him uh, from latinoprost to the fixed combination of bimetoprost timalol and uh, in order to decrease iop up to 16 mm mercury we also pay attention to the peripapillary atrophy as we know that this is a predictor of fast glaucoma progression uh, it was shown in many papers, uh, including the recent one. Uh, you can see that uh, the dropout of horror capillaries is associated with a very fast glaucoma progression and the appearance of the paracentral scotomes that, of course, is very dangerous because it may uh, reduce the quality of life of our patients. The insufficient choroidal blood flow may cause the disappearance of the bundles of retinal nerve fibers. And um, this phenomenon was uh, described many years ago by Herrich, and uh, it is also described in these textbooks. It is very important because we know that insufficient uh, choroidal blood flow may cause the damage to the lamina cribrosa as well and cause the focal damage of lamina that um, is associated with paracentral scotomes, like in this clinical example. Please um, pay attention to this focal damage in lamina cribrosa that is associated with a severe structural loss, dropout of vessel density in the inferior hemisphere, and the associated uh, damage in the visual fields. Moreover, in this patient, we obtain glaucoma progression. Please pay attention to the significant decrease of retinal ganglion cell layer and uh, the dropout of vessel density in the same hemisphere. And once again, it is clear that um, IOP of 18 mm mercury um, is not enough. This is not the target IOP, and we have to switch this patient from latinoprost to bimetoprost at a fixed combination, and moreover, we prescribe drizolamide. As we know that this medication, uh, according uh, to some experimental uh, data papers, may increase uh, the choroidal blood flow. And according to our experimental data, the fixed combination of dirzolamide and timolol has the advantages over all other fixed combinations due to its high antioxidant activity. And it was shown by us uh, both in vivo and vitro models. These properties of the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors uh, were described um, in this literature review recently in two parts of the review. And I also would like to draw attention to primonidine. Uh, once again, uh, this recent uh, literature review uh, of two parts where I tried to uh, draw your attention to some neuroprotective properties of primonidine. And of course, we may prescribe this medication as the initial therapy, especially for the patients in whom we may expect the fast glaucoma progression. If we look at the results of this recent literature review, once again, uh, please pay attention that it is very important uh, to um, collect uh, some patient's characteristics information in uh, patient severe, patient's report outcome measures. Because when uh, we choose uh, the initial uh, glaucoma therapy, we should keep in mind both patient's characteristics and uh, drug's characteristics, because the initial therapy, this is our own choice, and this is not the same as the first-line therapy, of course. Besides, we should try to do the treatment comfortable for our patients, because we remember that uh, many of them have the problems with fingers, hands, joints, and that is why the convenient vials are very important for these patients, like um, in the case of Trilactan, Latinoprost, and we also uh, should prescribe, if it is possible, the preservative-free eye drops, because they may improve adherence to glaucoma treatment. If the patients uh, have the dry eye syndrome, of course, we start to treat it. And first of all, with the most proven medications like Vismed. After all, remember about uh, 
the adverse effects, uh, adverse events that are listed in this table. And we realize that um, almost all hypotensive eye drops uh, have these adverse effects. That is why some other options of the initial treatment are extremely important. And several years ago, we um, reported about the a selective laser tuberculoplasty uh, as the initial treatment compared to the medical treatment about the benefits of this option. Uh, moreover, um, please pay attention at these graphs. If we repeat SLT, we may significantly decrease glaucoma progression in uh, six years according to our data. If we look at uh, the results of a light study published in Lancet, we may notice that SLT has some advantages over medical therapy due to some economical aspects as well. After SLT, we of course prescribe anti-inflammatory treatment and of course um, our choice um, is uh, the medication like Nakwan uh, that has a remarkable post-marking um, design of studies that included more than 3,500 patients. The question is, may we start glaucoma treatment with a surgery? According to the collaborative initial glaucoma treatment study, there was no a difference between uh, the tobacco-lectomy treated eyes and medical uh, treated eyes during five years of follow-up. But in the extended CIGTS, it was clearly shown that uh, the patients after tobacco-lectomy had some benefits uh, over the medical treated patients, but only in the advanced stages of glaucoma. It means that this question is still open and some other studies are required. Fortunately, uh, the treatment of advanced glaucoma study, the design of this study, was published last year in British Journal of Ophthalmology. And in this uh, um, study, tobacolectomy with amitomycin C will be compared uh, with medical uh, treated eyes. And of course, we are looking forward the, um, to the results of um, this study. In conclusion, Initial glaucoma therapy is defined individually, and we should keep in mind both glaucoma phenotypes and patient's characteristics. It is necessary to perform a structural and functional monitoring from the very beginning to revise the target IOP as soon as possible. In the certain cases, it is possible to prescribe fixed combinations as initial therapy and priority of laser or surgical treatment as the initial therapy is still to be determined. Dear colleagues, uh, thank you very much for your attention. And now... Uh